Wolf Island by Ian McAllister and Nicholas Reed. The Great Bear Rainforest is a majestic place full of tall trees, huge bears, and endless schools of salmon. Special wolves live in the rainforest too, often on the small islands that dot the rainforest coast. They're special because they can swim. Of course, they don't swim as well as seals do. They swim more like dogs. Call it the wolf paddle. But they swim well enough that they might be considered marine mammals, like sea otters and whales. On an early spring day, one of these wolves decided to leave his family and make his way to another island to begin a new life. Wolves live in families, just like people do. A male wolf and a female wolf are in charge of the family, and their young rely on them for companionship and protection. But sometimes, just as in human families, a member of an island wolf family will break away to start a new life on his or her own. This is where the expression lone wolf comes from. This particular lone wolf swam from his home to a neighboring island. In one way, the island was strange to him because he'd never been there before. But in another way, he was immediately at home because he knew there would be deer in the woods, clams in the sand, and seals in the sea. He couldn't hope to hunt a seal in the water. They were too sleek and slippery. But if one happened to haul itself onto the shore, the wolf would be ready to pounce. A big seal could feed him for days. Life was good, but because wolves are such social animals, it could get lonely for him. He would have liked another wolf to keep him company. He would have liked a mate, but so far he hadn't seen another wolf anywhere. Each April, the water near the shores of the islands in the Great Bear Rainforest turns a milky turquoise color because of all the herring eggs that have been laid. They are no bigger than sprinkles on a cupcake, but when there are millions of them, they are a feast. When the wolf bit into them, the eggs popped and crackled between his sharp teeth, and in no time, he was full. But as generous as the sea is to island wolves, they have to know their way around the land, too. Even island wolves hunt deer. But that's difficult when you're a wolf on your own. A healthy deer can be dangerous. It has a very powerful kick. So this wolf was extra careful as he lay in the tall summer grass watching for deer. And when he did go after them, he always made sure to target only the old and the sick. By now the wolf knew every inch of the island. He knew where to dig for the biggest and juiciest clams. He knew where it was safe to go after deer and where it wasn't. And he knew the best places to sit and gaze out to sea. As summer turned to fall, he spent a lot of time looking out to sea because he knew it wouldn't be long before the salmon would be back. And that meant the best eating of the whole year. Wolves are expert fishers. When a wolf sees a salmon swimming upstream, he plants his paws on the riverbed and bites at the fish until he catches it. Then he tears off the fish's head, sucking up all the fatty brains inside. A hungry wolf will eat hundreds of salmon between August and December. Other animals eat salmon too. Bears devour them. Birds from eagles to ravens eat the parts of the salmon the wolves leave behind. That's why you often see flocks of birds near a fishing wolf. The island wolf was thrilled to see the salmon. He knew they would keep coming for months and he would keep eating them. What he didn't realize was that when he ate the salmon, he fed the rainforest too. What he didn't eat, the birds ate. And what the birds didn't eat, insects and worms ate. They, in turn, enriched the rainforest soil by breaking down what was left of the fish into fertilizer, which then nourished the tall trees growing out of the soil. Every bit of the salmon was used by someone or something. Nothing was wasted. In nature, nothing ever is. Then, right in the middle of fishing season, something wonderful happened. For the first time since the wolf arrived on the island, he sensed that another wolf was nearby. Maybe it was the wolf he was waiting for, the wolf who would become his mate. He was right. A female had arrived on the island. She, like the male wolf, had struck out on her own because she wanted to start her own family. 
She hoped there would be a male wolf on the island who would become her mate. She missed the family she had left behind, but she also was eager to explore her new home. Meanwhile, the male wolf was feeling more satisfied than ever. His stomach was full of salmon, and he knew that somewhere on the island was another wolf. If only he knew where he or she was. It took a while for the wolf to get from one end of the island to the other. Every so often he stopped to sniff at the sand or a tree chunk to catch the scent of the other wolf. His sense of smell was thousands of times better than a human's. The female wolf also sensed there was another, another wolf on the island. Maybe the ravens would help her find him, since they often point island wolves to food. They know the wolves will open the seal or whale or sea lion carcass with their sharp teeth and make the meat available to birds too. So the female wolf thought they might point her to the male. They did. The male wolf saw the female on a beach in the bright fall sunshine. It didn't take them long to approach each other. They nuzzled and licked each other and sniffed each other's fur. The male wolf was sure he had met his mate and the female was sure she had met hers. From that moment on, they went everywhere together. The island was theirs now. They would spend the coming winter eating deer and whatever the sea brought them, and they would wait for their pups to be born the following spring. Very soon, they would be a proper family. The wolves' pups were born early the following year in a well-hidden den at the base of an ancient cedar tree. There were two males and a female. They were no bigger than slippers when they were born, but thanks to their mother's rich milk, they soon grew to be the size of footballs, and then bigger than that. In a matter of months, they were sturdy enough to go outside, where their parents taught them how to dig for clams, search for deer, and tear the flesh off a dead seal. Everything the parents taught the pups showed them the importance of family and togetherness. They learned that a wolf family works best when it works as a team. A year later, the pups were almost fully grown, and a new set of pups was being raised in the den. By this time, the yearlings could do everything their parents did. Best of all, they could take part in deer hunts. But because they were island wolves, they also knew the sea and its riches. One day, they watched as a pod of killer whales chased a, lion, a sea lion onto the shore. If the wolves were lucky, the sea lion would be theirs to eat. Like their parents, the pups grew to know every square inch of their island home. Everything a wolf needed to survive and thrive was there in abundance, except for one thing, mates. The pups knew, just as their father had, that if they stayed where they were, they would always be part of his family and would never have pups of their own. For that to change, they would have to do what their father and mother had done and leave this place for another. But were they willing to do that? Only time would tell. In the meantime, they continued to enjoy the island for the bounty it had to offer. And the wolf who started the whole thing had the satisfaction of knowing he'd done everything he'd set out to do. He knew the island was a place of wonder where creatures of many kinds lived and ate and gave birth. But for him, the most important thing was his precious family of great bear rainforest island wolves. <laughs>